Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to diagnose and try to fix this Nintendo Switch OLED that I bought off eBay. If you want to watch the teardown video that I've previously posted, you can check it out here. I'll link it in the corner. Um, but if you want to watch this video of me trying to fix this no power switch, just keep watching. So it doesn't power on as the listing said, and that is true. Uh, when I plug it into my charging station, it draws five volts at uh, about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 amps. So it doesn't go up from there and it should eventually kick into a higher charging uh, speed. I did leave it plugged in overnight just to make sure that the battery wasn't completely dead and drained and it, it had no change so first thing we need to do is get this thing apart so we can take a look at the board we need to check the board for shorts and i can't find any the only one place that had something interesting was this one capacitor near the bq chip it was reading 1.1 volts in diode mode when I think it should have been more like 0.56. And the pins to the charging port don't look too bad. I don't see any that are bent or exposed. So that looks okay, but the top of it doesn't. Uh, I don't know if this has been changed out before and I'll check that, um, check that fuse. And that's fine. Those don't usually go bad despite their intent, so. Change out this charging port. I'll add some leaded solder to the legs just to help it and flow and then come in with my heat gun. You want to keep the gun moving. Weaken those legs and you want to Pull up gently when you see the solder start to really melt because if you pull up before then, you risk ripping a pad and that would just make this entire process a lot worse. And there it goes. And no rip pads, which is very nice. And really, the cleaning out the legs was kind of a pain in the ass with my station. Um, I don't know if it wasn't getting enough heat in there or what, but they were not coming clean. So I had to come in with the hot air gun on top of the soldering iron to get those legs really cleaned out. There we go. Well, get the pads cleaned up. Add our flux. Tin it with some leaded solder and plop in our new charging port. When installing the new port, you want to take care not to get the heat too much directly on it. That These do have plastic in there and I kind of melted the one a little bit. It wasn't bad, but um, it'll happen if you're not too careful. And I didn't get the all the legs perfectly soldered on, so I need to come back in a second time with the station just to get it, hold it down and get it locked in place. And just to be on the safe side, I came in with my soldering iron to cover those uh, pins. I didn't come in with some more solder to anchor the legs in place. And even that wasn't even after replacing that, I still was, was getting the same results with the switch. Uh, wasn't really charging, wasn't powering on, so... Because of that capacitor, I decided that the PQ chip would be the next step in the process. 
and that came off easily. The Atten station is working really well to get these chips off. And then with that off, I really was having a hard time with my station, which I think needs to be upgraded because it's now the weakest link. It's, it's we're just having a hard time, even with my bigger tips, heating the ground planes and not sticking, not, you know, getting the solder to melt properly. I did get that cleaned up and come in with our station get a little pre-melted to make it easier on the chip and then you see it flow right into place which is nice to see and with it in place I'll press down on this on the chip and come back in with the hot air to squeeze out all the excess solder You know, these little extra solder balls should be easy to clean up with a good working tip, but when I come in with mine, it just wants to not melt, not, not attach, so it kind of makes it more of a mess, unfortunately. I come in with my bigger soldering iron tip and that does the trick. But even with the BQ chip replaced, I'm still getting the same results on the charging station. So the switch still doesn't turn on. And that brings me to turn my attention to the M92 chip, which is a common failure point for these switches. I think the whole, there was a whole um, docking gate thing when the switch first re released where they were saying, you know, you shouldn't use a third-party dock because it was bricking switches. And I think what it was doing was it was just killing the M92 chip. Maybe the BQ chip, the M92 chip. These chips, are, for some reason, just are weak failure points. They don't destroy the whole system, but they do go, and that's kind of annoying. I bet a lot of the people who thought that they had brick switches and Nintendo was like, well, we're not covering this in warranty, sorry. I, I bet a lot of them were just an M92. Anyway, the M92 comes off easy. I'm able to... You know, also tend the pads here. And here you can see how the station, even though it's at a, it's set to a high temperature, it's just not, it's, it's, it's really not doing great with the, the soldering. It, sticking to the, the ground plane there, causing more issues. Now I'll put the M92 chip in place, solder it in. Alright, plop the M92 in place, oh, very much out of place, pop it over, oh, nicked a little capacitor there, and we're not 
lined up at all. There we go. Now we're lined up. Press down on the chip. Fix this capacitor. And it'll flow right back into place, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Come on. That looks a lot better. Looks a lot better on that side at least. Not a little quicker, but. Okay. Still nothing. Over here. And let's plug this in just one last time to see if anything has changed at all. New charging port, new BQ chip, new M92, and still 5.2 volts at 0.6 amps. So, still not wanting to work properly, which is not charging properly at least. So, at this point, I don't, when the battery's disconnected, I don't get anything at all, so it's not turning on. Uh, at this point, I've changed the pad, I've changed the charge port, changed the BQ chip, changed M92. I, you know, it could be a bad M92 chip. I could have ruined the M92 chip. Uh, lots of things could have happened. Uh, 
I don't know where to go from here though, because you know it's possible it's a CPU issue or a NAND issue. Unfortunately, I uh, also possibly could be the max I see over here, just because of the weird reading I'm getting on the BQ chip. Uh, I'm not gonna throw this away, I'll keep it. Keep messing around with it. Maybe I'll change out the chips again here and there when I feel like it, just to see if I can save it, because it would be nice to save this OLED. It is in pretty good condition, besides the fact that it doesn't want to work. Um, so, but I, Thanks for watching. Sorry this one didn't turn out the way I wanted. Really wished I could have fixed it. it would have been nice to have an OLED switch. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. I do have a regular switch board I have in the works that I did manage to fix. So that one will hopefully not take me three weeks to edit down and get out. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing that, you know, uh, please consider subscribing. I, I reached 500 subscribers, which is quite a milestone for me. I'm, you know, shocked that I got that many subscribers. That's fantastic. I'm thankful for everyone who subscribed. I, I really do enjoy making these, and I hope that they're useful for you and that you learn things, that they're entertaining, that if you have an issue with one of your devices, it might help you figure out what's wrong with it. Sometimes it's a little more involved, like replacing one of these types of chips or ports. Sometimes it's easy, like a PS2 ribbon cable. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with these devices. And I think the more information out there to help people fix them without having to throw them away is always better. So I'll end the video there. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good day.